Hello. Hello. I assume we are live now. Yes, we are live. Excellent. Except for when my frames start to drop for some reason. I don't know what's going on. I'm wired in directly. I shouldn't have any issues. Looks like I'm having issues connecting just to the server itself. Yeah, it happens. Um, Okay, well, welcome back everybody. This is uh, JRTA4, and if you are not familiar with what JRTA is, this is an annual marathon that we uh, raise money for Japanese runners to attend AGDQ. Um, so this AGDQ will feature hopefully four runners going if we can raise enough money. Uh, we have the two Yoshi's Island racers that just finished their race, Yamayu and Far, and we also have two Rockman 2 runners, Shoka and Soraki. So we are hoping to raise $7,500 altogether to get them to AGDQ. So done a great job so far with donations. Please keep them coming. Uh, keep them coming all day. We had a great uh, block the last two hours. Raised a lot of money, which is great. So yeah, let's keep going strong. With uh, Wario Land 4 by Mr. Shasta, which is coming up in just a second. Hello, it's me. Hey. Hello. Are we good to go in that, by the way? Yeah, everything should be good. Is the audio sound fine, everyone? Other than the drop Sounds frames, I'm just going to try lowering the bit rate a little bit. See if that okay. helps. Alright. Cool. So, yeah, drop the bit rate, so hopefully that'll help. Okay. So we're good? Yeah, we're good. Uh, All right, sweet. Just, just give me a countdown when you're ready. All right. So before this run starts, I'm going to explain something really quickly about that will happen throughout the entire run. So I'm going to be, first, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a bunch of soft resets just throughout the entire run. I'm going to do it on this intro cutscene right here is get the entire thing in about 45 seconds. I'm going to do that after every single level, skipping the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, long countdown animation at every, every level. I'm gonna do the same thing after every boss for the exact same reason, and also before every boss as well. Overall, it saves about 11 minutes throughout the run, if you can believe that. So yeah, I'm just gonna explain that really quickly before it starts. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna use my splits as well for this run. So if you're a space runner background, then yeah, <laughs> that's what that is. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll give a countdown then. Three, two, one, go. There we go, software set right there, and here we go. It's time for more than four, everyone. Welcome. First and foremost, we have this, this tutorial over right here showing off the mechanics of the game. I'll say this game is a, it's a big momentum based platformer. And there's a lot of movement tech to it in general. Like, first and foremost, if I. Uh, there's two forms of dashing. There's R dashing, which uh, I'm doing right now. It allows me to gain speed over time by just holding on the R button. We use that a lot to do a lot of precise platforming throughout the game using just momentum, and also B-dashing, which allows you to destroy just one block right in front of you, or, or destroy an enemy. Like, even R-dashing right here, for instance. If luckily, that button, like, right here, I can actually grab, an, I can actually grab a, uh, a rock as soon as I... just instantly. And then if I... if I, uh, throw it up just in the air very very shortly, without charging it at all, then I can actually jump off of it, like what I just did in that last room. If I also slide, uh, into a slope, I can immediately get into a roll animation, which saves a little time as well too. Now here's a hard trick coming up right here that I usually reset on. <laughs> Hopefully I can get this. Yo, first try, nice. Good stuff. That's actually really precise. That's a I get just barely enough height there to break that blue block. Barely enough. That was good. Alright, so at every level there's this frog switch that have to hit. And yeah there we go. <laughs> the frog switch counts down, you have to escape the level and go into that portal again. The game will literally uh, say, I'll save on the first frame of going to the portal, so you can just software set as soon as you get in there. But yeah, that's the first level. Every level has uh, four, th four chests you need to grab, which unlocks the boss, and also a little ghost bird thing named Keezer. That's what I got there. It makes the platforming a lot more interesting. Anyways, here's Spoiled Rotten. If you can type eggplant emoji in chats, 
to be appreciated because I'm fighting eggplant right now. All right, anyways, all I'll do is, is get him in the corner like this so you can't turn around. And there we go. He's a boss, he's a life. Bam. So there's four patches in this game that I can go to. There are four sets of levels. And I just go, I go into the first one here, uh, Sapphire Passage, because this, this passage has the hardest levels of the entire game. Or like some of the hardest at least, like Crescent Moon Village, for instance. There's a lot of precision in this level and a lot of stuff that can go wrong. So I get out of the way first, like this, like this, for instance. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, I got it. Nice. All right, that's a really precise jump right there to break all those blocks and destroy that turtle enemy. That turtle enemy cannot be destroyed, but from the side, because he has a bunch of spikes on his shell. So, I think it's literally like frame perfect to get that. I'm not even like joking. I'm not even just throwing that that turn. That's like I think it's literally that. Another one is right here. That bounces guy off a wall to jump off of him. I got that first try as well. Stuff. Then just a regular jump right there off the enemy. It's really good. Then you gain enough speed here so I can get a full on R dash like that. Then look over the last second as soon as, I, as soon as I jump on the ground so I can go right into the doorway. I can't go into the doorway without if I'm in R dash animation. I have to get out of it just last seconds. All right. If I go on a ladder and press B to the side, I can uh, get off a ladder instantly. This is a hard trick here as well. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, barely missed. If I got that trick, I can break all his boxes all in a row without having to, without having to stop that, without having to slow down whatsoever. I gotta go for it once though, or else I lose a lot of time. All right, there's a the frog switch. So here's the first instance of an anime, of a uh, former warrior. This is Bad Warrior right here. <clears throat> Allows you to fly really high into the sky like that, which in that case gets me Keezer. Now the rest of the level is, is a the rest of the level revolves around avoiding that uh, pirate ghost enemy that you saw there a second ago. It wasn't that big deal on the on the way into this level, but once you have Keezer, it's a huge deal. He will steal Keezer away from you in particular if he gets near you. So again, so all, all my movement here, all my movement here is to it is based around like getting away from him, like that. So yeah, I get to do a dash off that little slope right there so I can get a full on R dash quickly. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. I'm gonna jump right over here into the doorway like that. And there we go. Once again, if I, if I B dash off the ceiling, I get a, a, a much faster boost just immediately. Just like what happened there. And we're almost to the end. Go right above this little pile of rocks already like that. Then. Damn. There we go. So a lot of these levels in this game have a theme to them, and or like the patches usually have a theme to them, like. But all, all these levels have like some sort of gimmick to them in general. And there's 16 levels in the game, or actually 18. There's four in each passage. Like this one's called Arabian Nights, and the gimmick are these. Uh, let's see if we can get this actually. Nice. There we go. That's called Bug Bounce. It's a momentum-based trick where you just bounce off two bugs. It's a lot more precise than it looks, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, but what I was saying is that all levels have some sort of gimmick, and Arabian Nights' gimmick is are these carpets right here. They're all over, they're all over the level, and all I have to do is just jump on them like this to rise up really quickly. I dash just a little bit to the right on that last carpet so I can go on top of this little slope. This. Then do a regular B dash right here. So I can go right into that doorway immediately. Just line, line myself up perfectly. And here's a <laughs> warrior of some puffy cheeks. I don't know what this form is called, but like he, his cheeks puff up, puff up when he gets stung by a bee, presumably because he's allergic, and that's canon. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that allows him to just get to the top of a ceiling like that until he crashes, of course, and he gets back to normal. Yeah, there's keys right there. And we got him, and let's go. I guess I'll explain really quickly since not much in the level, or not much to the rest of the level, what the Cagar and Ryan is. So, Cagar and Ryan is called normal 8% zipless. Nice, there's a little trick there to save some time. But what what's, what zips are in this game, and why we're not doing them, are they're, they're basically uh, frame perfect tricks. Or if you're lining yourself up correctly against like a, the corner of a wall, that's a 9 degree angle, like this corner right here, for instance, above me. I can actually zip through it, but it's like you have to pause on the correct frame and unpause on the right frame as well, too. It's really, really precise, and it's frame perfect. 
So it really just gets rid of a lot of the stress and makes it only about movements instead of nailing like those really hard tricks like that. Also, this is also a normal difficulty, which is the easiest difficulty in the game. And trust me, <laughs> that's, that's definitely a good thing. The other difficulties in this game are extremely difficult and they change up the run a lot. For instance, on a... On the other difficulties, the chests are in different locations. There's more enemies in more inconvenient locations. And it really just makes the run a lot lower. But it makes it more interesting for sure. This is Fiery Cavern, by the way. This is the land of damage boosts. All these lava pillars pop up on this level and they're really slow to wait for. Oh, that was an accident. That should be fine. Therefore, the entire point of this level is to uh, get not get hit too much like that. That's actually really bad now. Hopefully I don't die. <laughs> yeah, the point of this level is to just get past them like this and like... Oh god, this, that's actually really bad now. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go really slow right here. That was really weird. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're gonna wait for this lava pillar now as a backup strat. Because that happens. Usually my health is really good here and like enough to worry too much about like stuff like this happening, but I just kind of I got I messed up. That's all right. Anyways, yeah, there's some back, there's some hearts right there I can grab, which you need one as well for this little strat, like that. I, I grab pound there so that I can uh, disrupt that enemy right in front of me, so he doesn't pull out a boulder and stop my, all my movements. And then slide into the gap there because that's fast. All right. I love the mechanic of Fire Cavern as well. The whole gimmick of the level is that it goes from lava to just ice like this as soon as you hit the frog switch. And that just escapes the level with ice physics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Blastig. You don't have to pause to do your zips, but like it makes them way, way easier. Becca Red, who's a World Record holder for like pretty much every category in this game, he. I think at one point he started implementing uh, bufferless zips into his runs, which is ridiculous. Like, it's ex that's extremely hard to do. The inputs are just crazy. <laughs> but he did it, because it saves time, of course. All in, all in the name of speed, after all. All right, I'm gonna do a little, a quick B-dash right here off the small, s oh, didn't get it, never mind. <laughs> never mind, Nora just said. I was gonna do a little, I was doing something fast there, but I messed up. <laughs> all right, well, anyways, go up this little gap, get that guy in the, in the butts, and we're gonna go back here. And now we're out. That level has a longer escape than, used, than we're used to so far. But it's alright. Now after those three hard levels, there is uh, Hotel Horror, which is a pretty straightforward level. All I have to do is just go to the right, go to the left, jump over some enemies, and at the end, just, <laughs> just jump off an enemy. It's not too, too bad. But yeah, basically all the levels, all the, all the rooms in this level are set in a four x four grid, like a hotel, I guess. And we're going, we're going to through each room to get everything we need. If you have any donations to read, it's probably the perfect level to do so in. Sure. So we uh, had a five dollar donation at the end of the Yoshi's Island run from Juan. This is GG. Thank you very much for that donation. Thank you. And. I just want to uh, let everybody know that we um, do have the prize that you can win. So we have the Yoshi's Island complete in-box copy. So if you donate $5 from now until Crotel re uh, Renovations, which is like another five hours or so from now, you are entered to win. So keep those donations coming in. Sweet. That means a little more heavier than usual. So I have to actually uh, charge a throw to actually jump off of them instead. A little, little small difference there. Makes it a little bit more tricky, but it's not too, too bad. That mean I threw in particular actually makes it really heavy. We haven't become Heavy Wario yet, but <clears throat> we'll see him later. We'll make an appearance, trust me. All right, I get that chest on the way up because it lets me get a full-on hard dash on the way out of that room, which saves a little, a little bit of time. Gotta save the frames, you know. All right, now here, we know we got all four chests so far, but now you get, get keysers right up here. And we're gonna do it like this. Get that enemy right there and jump off of them. <laughs> it just skips that entire room. We usually have to use that fire in me to get to where Keezer is because he's in front of a fire block. It's only broken when you're a fire Wario. And that's it. We just become a zombie, fall through the floor, and bam. That was a good level. I saved a lot of time there in my splits. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're to the first boss of uh, 
or we're down to the boss of Sapphire Passage, rather. Just Catbats. Catbat has a, I think, two or three frame window to actually get and hit a hit on him early, which saves a few seconds every time you do it. My best is four hits on him. I've never gotten a five hit Catbat, which is a perfect fight. If I can get four hits, that'd be perfect, but let's see. Essentially, it happens whenever he goes down to make a wave like that. Pretty precise, though. Like I said, like a four or five frame window. Almost got it there. I have three chances to do it. I missed one chance right there. Good. Number two. I ah, almost got it. All right, last chance right here. Also, I can't do it without losing time. Yeah, there we go. Got it. So I've got it at least once. Let's see if I can get it two more times. Nope. That's really bad. <laughs> okay, so those pro as you saw there, those purple uh, Cyclops eyeball thingies, wherever they are, they they inflate you and make you go to the ceiling. That's not good. I believe that just wastes time. Oh well, there we go. And now second phase of Cat Bats, the bat on top of his head is destroyed, and we're just gonna keep we're just gonna chill up there. We're we're gonna become we're we're gonna become the bats, you know, like this. It's gonna gonna keep doing this bam and then soft reset as soon as I kill him there we go that's sapphire passage it's a pretty difficult passage in general that's just how it is all right so now there's toy block tires this, this, this has my favorite music the entire game it's really relaxing and thick yeah, the gimmick are these blocks you need to you need to throw into the holes. As we all know, the, the triangle blocks go in, don't go in the circle holes; they go in the triangle holes. But yeah, that's what that's what we're doing here. There's a lot of neat stuff in this level in general, <clears throat> and just not a lot of neat visuals. That's what this game does really well at. All the animations and visuals look really unique and really cool, and they're very clean to say at least. It's pretty impressive considering how this game is made early on to GBA's life cycle. It came out in 2001, so did GBA as well. Let's go wait here, practice our dash dancing. I'm going to the Smash tournament tomorrow, so it's pretty important that I practice my dash my dash dancing, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. I think I gotta do that one more time as well. Come up here. I actually intentionally jump over his chest. As soon as I okay, I messed up. <laughs> But it's fine because I can just do that instead. Not a big time waste. Dash Jansen. I jumped around chest there because like it makes it so I don't have to move as far, like back and forth. Oh god, uh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, that's actual time loss because I messed up my cycle there. Oh well, it's fine. <laughs> just less time go back and forth. Anyways. Another, one cool thing about hitting, hitting the frog switch is that there's actually frog blocks as well, which only unlock after you hit the frog switch. And right there, it makes it so you can get keyser and get out of there. There's actually a pretty precise R dash there. God, the sun. Now, all, every single chest we get in this level is actually gone after a frog switch, so I got three already on the way out. The last is right here. Ooh, slam dunk. That was nice. There's the last one right there in that room. And a precise jump right here. Got it. Good stuff. There's Big Board, one of my favorite levels in the game, just kind of because of the concept of it. It's actually pretty cool. So we're going through basically a board game while we're going through a 2D platformer, if that makes any sort of sense. And when you get to the end of the board game by the end of the level, at one point the, the game will, the level will actually force us, to, force us to get to the end to actually continue the level. So once we get there, it's going to be cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to hit all the switches on this level as soon as I get, like, in a precise order. So in this case, I hit the 6 at the beginning, so that it gives me... Which I can't avoid doing. <laughs> it, gives, it gives me just solid platforms instead. And then, and at the end, I, and I'm trying to get, overall on this level, I'm trying to get all the hearts and the diamonds, because they don't waste time to actually get. Anything else will waste time. Like, if I hit the warrior symbol, for instance, that would make me get power, and that will waste time, of course. I got four there, barely. I got the warrior car out of that. I didn't get the warrior car out of the way there. That's pretty important. All right. 
There's a frog switch. We need to get through this, this board game as, as fast as possible. Time to go fast. So this trick right here I'm gonna do, where I ground pound after I hit that number right here, it's really precise to get the same number in a row. It's like a few frames to do so. Let's see if I can do it. I need to do it four times in a row right here. Number three. Nice, there we go. Good stuff. And there's a four right there, and you get six. Another four after that. Oh, <laughs> just let go past. Good job, me. <laughs> oh no, okay, I messed up. I'll be fine, I'll recover. There we go. So pretty fast, that was okay. Now let's get out of here. So it's kind of debatable whether having these uh, red blocks here be solid or transparent is, is uh, faster. They're, it's a really neg negligible difference in, in, in speed, but I prefer the uh, transparent blocks here personally. If I can get them like during that last little part. All right. Almost to the end right here. Just gotta do another R dash through this room over here and right here. Bam. Alright, that was a pretty good level actually. Alright, now it's time for Duel Woods. The beginning of this level is not too bad. We're gonna meet our friend here, who I call Pig Casso. It's a pig who's an artist as well. I feel that's a pretty appropriate name. I'm just gonna keep just going through here. I, I get an R I do a B dash right there so I can get a lot of momentum so I can go through a section a little bit faster. I'm gonna hit that block, bounce off the warrior car, and then go into that room. There's a chest right there. Alright, low momentum right here. If this part correctly, I shouldn't see any any enemies at all. Oh, barely saw that guy. That's totally fine. Yeah, Hoggis uh his name's actually Hoggis, but Picasso here. Uh, he draws enemies on top of you and tries to hurt you that way, but he's not too, too bad to deal with. At least in, at least in a spewing sense. But hey, here's the hard part of this level. Here's the hard part of this level. It's time for the escape. There's a lot to, there's a lot of stuff to go through in the escape here. Like, for instance, I'm gonna go through every single action right here. I'm gonna go over here, just gonna bounce on the right side of this guy, so he bounces to the left, get that pencil, go over here, bounce off of him. Go over here, get the chest. Back down here, get the pencil, jump off this ballerina. Or pig ballerina, excuse me. Got got differentiate, I guess. It's off of him again. Push that pencil, go over here, and we're out. I'm doing a little precise jump here, so if I can get on top of this block, there it is. Nice stuff. And same thing right here. Another chest. Get destroy this first guy here, then have the other guy crash into the wall, so I can. Him up right here and hopefully bounce off of him. Didn't get it. It's fine. Back up right there. Up next is Warrior Land 4. Old age, I mean, never mind. <laughs> Alright, anyways. Here's the end of Duel Woods. Damn. That was a good level. That was a gold split in my splits. What the heck? <laughs> my PB also had gold there, so that's pretty incredible. Anyways. <laughs> Domino Rose next. It's a very. It's, it's kind of a long level in a way. There's a lot of stuff to do in this level, though. A lot of precision, like that right there, which makes it so that I can go through that room very smoothly instead of getting stopped by one of those blocks I jumped over. Let me get that chest later. Don't worry, I noticed where it was. It's faster again the escape. Oh, just barely missed that uh, switch right there. So the gimmick of Domino Row are, are these uh, Domino switches right here that you see. They start at the beginning of each room, and they, there's a stopper for you at the very end of it. And that's the whole gimmick of it. The stopper, if I don't hit that in time, then it can make it so I can't go down certain paths. Like, for instance, if I don't hit that, those blocks will still be there when I go back and do the escape. That damage is through those little blocks, so I can get through a little bit faster, like that. Alright, now we're going. Oh, hello. Bonked a bit right there. A little on the wire section. The wire section is a little bit weird. Because something in this game is kind of strange. Anyways, I'll stop by that. I'll talk about that later. So first off, 
In this, this room, there's a Slusa strat where I B dash and jump, and then I turn around and then uh, go upwards again so that I can go immediately on top of a ladder. Saves a little bit of time each time I do it. I only do it in that room, so yeah, I have to point it out. Alright, get a little momentum right here so I can go through that door. Nice. Then we get an R dash right there. And now we escape. So I talked about the swimming earlier. Swimming is really weird in this game. I have to hold... I don't just like mash the B button to go fast. I have to like hold it down for a small amount of time every time I do it. It's like... I want to say like five frames in particular. <laughs> just, so I can go as, just so I can swim as optimal as possible every single time. I can't just like mash it. It's, I have to like hold it down just a slight amount every time. Which makes it a little bit weird and a little bit wonky to control. But it's overall... I've gotten used to it. So it's not too too bad. But yeah. All right, another, dam another damage boost right here. Then we're just gonna go right into his enemy. He's gonna hammer us and make us a string warrior so we can go to the top of that room like that. Oops, get in the door, please. Thank you. All right, now we got the chest over there. We get an R dash over here. And now, Keezer's down this hole, but the portal's to our left, so we have to go down the hole to get Keezer. There's also another chest down here, so there's that too. It's at the very end, very end of this room. Oops. Meantime, I have to go all the way through here. And just gonna slide under this... Or not. I was gonna say, we're gonna slide under those little... Little spike balls, we didn't do that. Here's the damage boost strat. It's not the intended way to get through this part. You intend to hit to break all those blocks there and go through that little hole instead to get through there. That's slow. And we're, we're here to go fast. This is a speed running marathon, not a slow running marathon, am I right? Mostly right, yeah, 99%. Yeah, probably. We do have a fighting game match. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Mario Party as well. That's true. Alright, but yeah, this, now we're in the hardest boss of the game, or at least the most volatile one. This is Aerodense. He's a rodent on top of an inflatable teddy bear. However, if he hit the teddy bear uh, twice, he actually goes back to the top of the screen after I flip him over right now. So the goal is to hit only the rodents. If I don't hit the rodents, then I can lose up to 15 seconds at a time. And he has a lot of health too, so it's very volatile. Let's see if I can do this. I'll be quiet for a bit. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, that was really bad. Oh man, I saved that. That was really close. Oh jeez. <laughs> that was really, really close to not making that at all. I almost just I almost just messed up that fight badly, but we got a one cycle, and that's the important part. Good, good stuff. Alright. And after Aerodin, we have one of the hard levels of the game. I just forgot to jump there completely. <laughs> this is a curious factory. A lot of precision with the platform in this level. Because if I mess up my timing on these platforms right here, then I can get right. I can get destroyed really badly. AK, I can probably just fall off because I'm not expecting it. But yeah. There's a room of these four platforms right here in particular. You have to hope not to fall off of them, basically. If I jump on them too quickly, at least. Two, three. Bam. Alright. Good stuff. I slid to the right. There's also all these conveyor belts as well, too. Which can go, make you go either faster a little bit. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're falling down there. Maybe we can go either faster or slower depending on where they are. Anyways, here's the frog switch on the other hole that didn't fall down. Well, now let's get out of here after all that. Let's get back up the same ladder again and do the exact same action to get out of here. Anyways, there is a key right there just kind of flowing in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what he's doing. It's a bad place to sleep after all. Then hopefully I can get squished right here. All right, no squishy, we're good. If I get squished right there, I, lo I lose literally half a minute. I'm not kidding you. So good thing that didn't happen. In this run, the entire time, we don't actually become flat Wario. That's the one power we don't actually get in this run. Because it's, it's overall slow and we don't need to be. We don't need to do that to complete the game. I go to the right there so I despawn these uh, stomping things. I don't know what they're called. These little stompers. 
And that's so I can get a full on R dash out of there and save some time and movement. Otherwise, I get squished there, actually. That's not good. There we go. Not the best level in the world, but it's okay. Mind if I take a few seconds to plug some stuff? Yeah, go for it. Sure, so I uh, just want to remind everybody, this is JRTA4. We are raising money for four runners to get to AGDQ 2018. We have uh, Por Yamayu, who are the Yoshi's Island racers, and we have Azaraki and Shoka, who are the Rockman 2 racers as part of the Mega Man 1 through 3 relay. And uh, coming up, we will have Cave Story, and we had an incentive that we got met, which is <laughs> get Curly's panties. No nice. idea what that means, but uh, we'll see. Um, if, uh, <laughs> if you're looking very put, lewd, though. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll if, see you're, if you're looking to put some money towards something, um, we do have the upcoming Mega Man 8 Bit War, so you can play on either the Sega Saturn version or the PS1 version. Uh, Sega Saturn's in the lead, but PS1 is not too far behind if you want to put money towards that. Or maybe the La Mulata Classics, Natural Dating Sim. That's 55 out of $200 right now, so if you put some money towards that, we can get that happening. So yeah, thank you very much for watching in. Mm -hmm. And for watching and stay tuned for more all right important life lessons for everyone right here if you're overweight just fall down into a pit of water and you'll become thin again see like war is about to do right now there we go see he's thin once more who knew that's just, that's all it took anyways I'm, i just come fat warrior there he's you come back to war, regular warrior if you just fall into water <laughs> simply enough and then you can spring warrior so i can go up there like that i guess just gonna fall down as enemy that's cool <laughs> Now let's just, let's just get a keyser. Here's a shortcut probably no one knows about, it's like when playing this game casually. You just break those blocks and just get up here a little bit faster. I see it's like 20 seconds of movement or so. It's pretty crazy. Also despawn enemy right there by going to the right a little bit too far. Kinda cool, I guess. Now let's get float to the top of the top of the tree again so you can get into the portal and get out of here. All right, now we're at four below fridge. This is the level before the worst level in the game. <laughs> I'm just gonna pre preface to that right now. I'll talk about it later, but yeah, the gimmick of this level is that everything's frozen over, and there's a lot of ice physics. At the beginning here is actually some good variables to run, to run on. I almost fell off there. Close. You know, enough height there so you can break that blue block. Pretty important. And yeah. The gimmick of this level as well is that you have to go, it becomes a snowball like this a lot, which allows you to go over slopes and break the snowball blocks, which are only in this level. It's also this room here. This room is, has, has a bunch of narrow passages. There's like eight of them, I think, lined up. I go into the fifth one right here, and the fourth one has the exit right at the very end of it. Yes, pinball zones. Pinball zones are the worst level in the game. The game barely makes a cycle, by the way, but no one's done a run before, and it's like, extremely precise like you're, I don't know how to explain it properly but yeah it's like just take my words extremely precise and no can make the fastest cycle there on the snowball oh all right I did make that cycle I cornered a little bit you can make that cycle just barely if you move fast enough there but I want I want a little bit slow and that's fine we gotta, we gotta go to the top of the room here to get the snowball they'll fall all the way to the bottom again just like that and we'll just like become a snowball and roll ourselves to the top somehow. Because this is how physics work. If you stand on a very small hill and, and you'll, you'll eventually just snowball to the very top of the hill. Because logic. Anyways, chest right there. Another chest down here as well. It's in our way. So we clear these two chests so we can get uh, the snowball up here. Also, we need that you know, com to complete the game, but that's not important. All right, and here's the frog switch. Let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle, as they say. Another stumble I'll have to wait for over here. And then we have a longer room, a bunch of narrow horizontal passages. And yes, also there's a room there that I just previewed. That's just, you know, a ladder and that's it. <laughs> it's just like that one part of Metal Gear Solid 3. I don't know. Oh, I actually got frozen. I was trying to avoid getting frozen there by that Yeti, but the Yeti was spaghetti to me. All right, now let's get up here. I got good luck there, actually. So there's like, there's basically no luck in this run, but one bit of luck are these Yetis, actually. 
sometimes they can like be they can like be a little bit farther to the right or to the left like once they spawn on the screen that time i got lucky and the yayo's to the right of the ladder so that i didn't have to stop and wait for him to to uh turn me to ice i guess i'm not I'm sure what he does but yeah anyway this is pinball zone in my opinion the worst level in the game it's about four and a half minutes of straight up making cycles yeah, I should finish with that. It's like trade making cycle level. That's about it. The game because level, if, if you couldn't tell right here, is I have to throw four pinballs into four of these holes here. Receivers, whatever you want to call them. And that's how I advance in each room. There's six rooms like that. Four of them before the frog switch. The second room is actually the hardest one to make the cycle on. Let's see if I can do this. I have a little bit of time right here, but then it's go time after that. Got a ground pound there, so I can get that pinball off, like that. There it is. Oh, didn't I didn't jump. <laughs> or I jumped, but like I didn't jump in rather. I'll just wait here. That was that was slow, but it's fine. Alright, just slam dunk that right in. And get another slam dunk right there. Stuff. This third room has a really annoying cycle to make at the very beginning of it. Hopefully this goes alright. Oops. Like right there. I think I actually failed it because of that. Because <laughs> I didn't jump. I jumped twice instead of once. Oh, no, I got Nice. That was really close. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I made that. That was just that was ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, that cycle is really hard to make sometimes. Because it's pretty precise. But we got it, so that's good. There's also that uh, enemy right there that can make you fat. That's a problem. Hey, so here's the fourth room. It's right here. Throw, the, throw a first pinball up there so I can bounce off it right into the hole. It's like that, but I failed to do that. <laughs> Another one right there. And the third one's actually down here below these uh, brickable blocks. You wouldn't think you wouldn't think to break that, but you have to because that's where the thing is. The last one's just right up here. Hopefully it doesn't close up. It did. That's fine. Gotta wait just a little bit. Alright, now I have the frog switch. And yes, the entire level was like this. If, if I was doing the uh, zips cag, where I can actually skip these last two rooms with uh, two zips. It's pretty cool. It'll, it'll allow me to just get right to the door here. But we're not doing that. Because it's not the right cag. It's not the right category. Unless the zips are really hard and I don't really know them. Well, I know them, but like, it's just really hard to pull off. Sound run that category. Well, that's not the reason. <laughs> what am I saying? Anyways, doesn't matter. Point is, this category is more fun for me. <laughs> Anyways, we're going... I got this two pinball, pinballs in there. Now we're going to the very top of this part of this uh, series of platforms right here. To put this last pinball in. Or second last one. Here's the last one right here. Then I'm just going to go all the way to the right again and spawn in all these pinball receivers that... They count the pinballs, basically. Because they don't, they don't actually go inside the pinball receivers, or whatever they call, want to call them, until they actually are on screen. So yeah. It's one of those games where like things don't actually start moving until you actually spawn them on screen. There's not really any global cycle in that case, unless like stuff is on screen that you can make the cycle on. Which is pretty cool, but yeah. That's just how it is. All right, now we're going up here. Go throw it. This pinball gets the ceiling, so that it falls the precise spot, so that's not out of my so that's out of my way a bit. Like right over here. It's a little bit closer to this receiver over here. And one more right here. And that level went pretty well. That's all. That's all. That's all the risk from pinball zone. That was a pretty good level. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with that. This level is usually a gigantic run killer for me because there's so many things I can mess up on. All execution and it's going on for about four and a half minutes. All execution and making cycles. So yeah. There we go. Good stuff. Now it's time for Cuckoo Condor, the boss of this of uh of Ruby Passage. Sorry, I forgot for a second. <laughs> but yeah, he's actually one of the easiest bosses in the game, if not the easiest one. He's only hard if you mess up and drop an egg, which is going to drop right here after I defeat this first phase. This first phase, all I have to do is go under the claw and wait for him to come down, then avoid it and hit back in like that. 
That's all you have to do. Eventually, he'll drop stuff like the saw blade right there, and also an electric saw blade on the left, but I won't see that one because we go too fast. Alright, one more hit. And here we go, second phase, there's another condor. Plot twist. It, it poops out eggs. We have, to, we have to throw these eggs right at uh, the condor on top. Like that. And last one, I'm gonna hold the egg here just for a second. Because this last phase starts moving really quickly. And it becomes really hard to actually hit him once he starts moving really fast. So just, we, we save an egg there so I can kill our last phase quickly. Alright, now here's Emerald Passage. This is basically the developer intended first passage of the game. Because, I, I, fi I figured that because these first three levels are... Why did I jump there? Are really easy. Um, why am I jumping? <laughs> I'm just misremembering. Anyways. Here's where I actually jump. <laughs> yeah, they're all really easy. Especially this first level. I also think this patch is Comfy Passage because... Every single level in this passage has comfy music. It's great. But yeah, all chests are like roundly open. Keys are just right there to get that block to make those blocks transparent. Or, uh, whatever the word is. Not transparent. I'm dumb. Sorry, it's like 1 a.m. <laughs> Any anyways, that's what we do. That's going to R dash right to the very end of the level. If we. Fall incorrectly after we stop right here with we'll R dash right to the end, and nothing will stop us. Like that. I guess that spear guy can be a little tricky, but we got past him. Bam. Alright, so yeah, now it's wildfire field fields. There's a lot of bees on this level, and there's a lot of flowers that the bees like to sting. We'll be avoiding all of them. <laughs> no stinging this time, that's pretty mean. And also very slow. In this next room here, I'm gonna be getting an enemy, and I'm gonna throw him up at, at very specific spots, like this, like right here, so I can bounce off of him. If it if that part if it did that part improperly, I can actually bounce off the enemy instead, and that would negate all the height that I got from that little boost, which allowed me to break that blue block there. Once again, if I fall from a, if my uh, if I do a ground pound from a, from a much uh, higher height, right from my get. You know, just a higher height in general. But do it from higher in the air, then I break blue blocks instead of just like regular brown blocks. There we go. Those bees do sting. They sure are very mean. I don't like them, quite frankly. These worms, though, they have happy faces and I like them. They're pretty cute. But these bees, though, they're pissed at me. Look at that. See that? Not good. I actually just dodged that bee by, by ducking. That's it. It's a little bit faster to jump off these vines and go back on top of them. Or technically that's a ladder, but yeah. Alright, now let's get out of here. See, the level doesn't too too bad. And now all I have to do, all I have to do now is just go to the left. We go from the rightmost room in the, in the level to the leftmost room in the level. <laughs> and that's it. One chest right there, and then just break that, and we're out. This is what I'm talking about. All the levels are like really easy in this passage. That's why I think this is the developer intended first passage in the game. Because because Sapphire passage to the left, which is where I went earlier on. But Emerald passage to the right, which has all these easier levels. Here's Mystic Lake. It's a, it's a level that's mostly swimming. There's a skip there's a few there's a skip at like halfway through a level that is really hard that I'll explain right now. Basically, I'm call I call it bubble skip. And if we move really fast in the water. We can actually skip past three of the bubbles instead of out of the four that'll pop up. If I get hit by any of these bubbles, I can lose a ton of time because they flip me to the top of the room. I think about 10 seconds each or so. So yeah, it's coming up right here. Let's see if I can do it. Right here. Let's go. Oh, I got one. I'll save it right here. Yeah, I wasn't gonna get that one. I was going a little bit slow. All right, so I got one bubble skip out. Oh, I got two bubble skips out of four. That's fine. We did. You can get all four of them, but it's really, really precise. I know Green Bean, who's the second place runner of this game behind Becca Red, who's, who's also gonna be running this game in AGDQ, by the way. And you should watch that. It's a really great run. If you enjoyed this run, by the way, watch his AGDQ run. But anyways, uh, 
No, no, I'm just getting out of here after that. And yeah, that's, that's, that's not much to say after that. We're just a bit jumping right here because it saves a little bit of time. Same thing if right here as well. If we jump on top of slopes like this, it saves a little bit of time movement because you, you slow down just a little bit when you go on top of the slope. There we go. And here's one of the harder levels in the game. This is this is Monsoon Jungle. There are these small platforms that swing back and forth that I have to keep my uh, momentum and speed on whenever I go over them. What I'm about to do on this on this screen is look it's harder than it looks. And it looks hard. Here we go. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, got that jump. Oh nice. That was really good. <laughs> Alright, so now after that we have we just have to break this block right here by, by becoming Fat Wario. I got a Fat Kirby in chat for Fat Wario. Thank you. All right, yeah, there's a chest right here. It's an inconvenient location for sure. It's a huge stop after that really PogChamp inducing room. <laughs> That's okay. Now I have to do it two more times right here for his next two rooms. Let's we'll see if I can do it. Three. Oh, slow down just a little too much, but I got it nice. That was really close, actually. <laughs> that was a really close little bit of platforming there. I almost fell off and just lost all my speed. That would have been really awful. But oh well, fine. We did it. So we got through there. Nothing bad happens. That's okay. Now it's going to go right through this little uh, underground passage here. Get the last two chests and then get out of here. Now there's, just, there's a shortcut. At, there's a shortcut right here I actually never knew about growing up playing this game. But I had to learn it because of speedrun. It's pretty cool. It's very simple, it makes the escape from this level a lot easier. Because otherwise it'd be really, really hard. Jump right there so you can get a little more speed, because like I said, we go slower on slopes. And there we go, this is right here. You roll right through that wall, and I never knew about that growing up. It gets you right to the end of the level. Instead of having to go through the uh pl the uh, room I went through from the when I first went through a level. Words are hard. <laughs> Anyways, teaser right there, and now let's get out of here. Good stuff. That's a very good level. In fact, the gold of my splits. Hell yeah, let's go. Nice. Alright, now here's the second last boss in the game for me. Is this crack this? <laughs> he can be really hard casually, but in the speed run, he's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is just keep the timing on when hitting him on his head. And we just keep him in place and we'll just kill him quickly that way. Simply enough. Though casually he can uh, swing his arms at you and make you turn into a zombie, which slows you way the heck down. Not here though. We can just do this instead. That is two golds actually. They're just barely gold, but still, that counts. Alright, good stuff. My visual cue is when his arms stop, by the way. That's how I know when he's gonna... Like, when I can hit him. Alright, good stuff. Now, after all the passes are done, we unlock Golden Passage, the last level of the game, and then there's Final Boss after that. I'll call time when it comes up, for sure. Oh, we're almost there. Alright, very beginning of Golden Passage, there's a, a, a there's a wire session, which is, this is unintended, but it's like, we have to do this. This session loses, loses you a lot of time to mess up each jump. It's all like timing and precision for each one. It's like right here. Good stuff. That went really well, actually. I think the best time there, getting to the pipe is 9.15 on the in-game timer up top. Also, yeah, that's that's also a gimmick of a golden passage. You start at the you start at the timer at the very beginning of the level. That's when you hit the that's when you hit the frog switch. It's the very beginning, so instead of at the very end of it. So now you're on a timer to beat the level really fast. All right, this room has keys in it, and there's a lot of steps to unlock him. First off, you can hit this little block there to make that a uh, bunch of blocks on that slope into an actual slope. Then we go over here. And jump off that chest. That's a one-shot trick. If I miss it, it loses a lot of time. 
Yeah, so, so the archaeologist rides those those two blocks right there so he can break that block down and then we're just gonna jump over here get a free diamond it's worth a thousand money a thousand monies <laughs> i don't know the currency in this game but yeah it's worth a lot a lot of money and then we're just gonna get out of there we got keyser and that's all we need well it's not all we need we have a few more chests we need to grab on the way out so we're gonna do that like right now if i miss this uh chest right here it wastes a lot of time as well so good thing i didn't miss that Good thing it's also really easy and not miss it. <laughs> but yeah, now it's gonna get out of here. Another Yeti right there for whatever reason. Oh, thought I jumped there, but instead I just slid. There we go. So that's Golden Passage. Boss of the game, and now here's the final boss of the game. Golden Diva. She's a really weird boss, and she's also really hard to do really quickly. <laughs> I'll just say that much. But yeah, there's a 45 second cutscene before the, before the boss starts, so I guess I'll explain it right now. Alright. So, she has uh, four phases. So the first phase are these uh, four heads that flow around her face. And I need to destroy the first two quickly so I can make a cycle on like on the next two, on the preceding head. That's how, that's how it goes. So when the head goes right in front of her, that's when it'll become solid. So I need to like destroy it quickly because of that, which I throw back at her face. The second phase has uh, four items to it. First, it starts off with a green circle-ish enemy. Then I can throw that at her face. Second one starts off with a, a blue ball, which I can hit into her face. Third's an egg, which I can alley oop into her face. And the last one is a hammer, which I'll be keeping for the hopefully the rest of the entire fights. All right, missed a cycle there. That sucks. <laughs> but that's the plan, at least. The last two phases are pretty neg negligible. No, it gets him when I get there. There we go. I'm going to riots. And I'm just going to damage myself right here. Like that. Just so I can, like, pick it up a little faster. There's the blue ball. Here, directly into her face immediately. Here's the egg. Alley up into her face, like that. And here's the hammer. Hopefully, I can keep this for the rest of the fight. You can turn yourself to Spring Warrior and here in the face. This part's, a, this part's pretty tricky. I get that. I accidentally pressed A there. <laughs> that was my own fault, though. Oh. Ah, okay. So I can also... Nice. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> that, was, that was a good backup. I can also ground pound to keep the hammer there, because it'll eventually disappear. I'll keep, I'll keep it from uh, disappearing if I do that. Like that. I'm a little far away, so I couldn't get to it in time. Oh, I missed it. That sucks. I'm gonna miss that as well. Yeah, this is not going too well. <laughs> this fight is spaghetti central, but it's fine. <laughs> it's a hard boss fight, like I said. It's definitely hard to do fast as well. Like that, that happens. Oh, right. <laughs> ah, great. Okay, so Choke City right now. Population JRT Marathon. Dang. It's fine. Just a little time loss. Oh. I keep missing, like, everything that's not the hammer, I swear. <laughs> okay, that time I got the hammer. And right in her face. Okay, last phase. She, her mask comes off. She's real as a uh, big face. Time's going up soon, by the way. I go below her. She gra ground pounds to the ground. She's really pissed. There it is. And... Time. All right, good job. GG. I lost like 40 seconds of that boss. <laughs> it's all good. good uh, it's run. all good. Yeah, it was really good. If I didn't lose so much time, though, it would have been almost a 49, which my PB is 49.20, so it would have been pretty good. I'm so happy with that, though. That was, ni that was nice. By the way, I'll explain something really quickly about the ending to this game while it's going on a bit. It'll have to take a few minutes There's until you see it, but... Basically, there are uh, four eggs to this game, actually. So every boss you face in the game, there's three chests you need to save or like get from them, and it depends on how fast you kill the boss. In this case, we killed them all quickly, so we got four. We got uh, three chests from each boss, giving us twelve. If we get twelve chests, we get the best ending, which is we save a princess, which has short hair. If we uh, 
get between 11 and 4 chests, we get the Cannon Princess, which appears in the intro of the game. She has longer hair, that's, all, that's the only difference. However, <laughs> simply enough, if we, get, if we get 3 or 2 chests, we get a princess that looks like Wario. <laughs> and if we get uh, 1 or 0 chests at the end of that, of that boss fight, or the end of the game in general, then we get a princess that's a baby. <laughs> so you'll see the princess right here. It's that cat as we saw in the intro of the game that I skipped. She turns into a princess, like right now, as soon as the pyramid crumbles. Also, what's going on, the plot of this game in general is a. Uh, simply enough, Wario. F I'll, I'll say in one sentence Wario reads in the newspaper that there's a pyramid discovered in the desert and goes out, and goes out to find treasure because Wario loves money. That's it. Nice. I yeah. So, this game is amazing, by the way. If you've never played this game before, it's on Wii UVC. The controls are really fluid and really fun to mess around with. And as such, I've run this game most of this year because it's just really fun. There's lots to improve on this game. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the kiss. Nice. <laughs> All right, but yeah. Anyways, we're a little behind schedule, I think. So yeah, we can we can end stream and move on the cave move on the cave story. Awesome. But yeah, thanks for having me, everyone, and hope you enjoyed for now. And I'll see y'all later. Enjoy cave story. Thank you very much, Shasta. We appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. So um, we do, we'll have Cave Story coming up next. Um, we are going to take a brief uh, couple-minute break. Um, so we're going to have the Restreamer restart his PC. Um, we think that might be the cause of the frame drops from earlier. So just hang tight. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, and hopefully this will fix the problems that we had. So uh, stick around. Thank you for watching. <laughs>